mind if I take my jacket off? I'm beginning to get the first part. I'm getting so excited about this. <laughs> Not taking my jacket off. I'm getting excited about the seminar. Boy, it's hot. Yes. I just love, you know, being in no one in this room other than people that have seen this before knew that I had this that this rip shirt on underneath. Is that true? Didn't it look like everything was crisp and clean and neat? And you'd already made judgments and said, boy, he's got a nice shirt. And it's all falseness appearing real. You see, now what would happen, knowing that my background is Lebanese and knowing that when we begin to hide the truth and are not prepared to take off our jackets of falseness and be who we really are, we're burning up a lot of energy hiding the truth. You notice I had some smiles on the front and the back? You see, when I took it off and allowed you to see that I do have some faults, I've had some rips and tears, but when I live in integrity, I have great cause to smile. No matter how many rips and tears. And guess what? When I pass out that spirit of integrity, what does it encourage others to do in my life? Because that's a natural law. Whatever you give out comes back. But it comes back multiplied. Something has gone wrong somewhere in this world that we live. We realise nowhere near our ultimate potential. We wuss around pretending we're crocodiles when we're just water lilies bobbing up and down. Afraid to take our jackets of force and stuff. You laughed at first when I did this. Within a few minutes you'll accept me with all my rips and tears because I've been honest and open. And now I'm free to express who I am because I no longer have to hold back and cover up the truth. I am who I am. All right, so now what we're going to do is have a little demonstration on the ball. This represents the rhythm of life or the rhythm of success. It represents getting rid of the old and moving into the new. If I take what life deals out with me and look for the good that is in it, remember we said earlier, the greater the trial, the greater the tribulation, the greater the blessing just around the corner. I have learnt to move with the blows, with the circumstances of life. I don't necessarily have to accept them, but I certainly now realise embedded within every circumstance is a seed that will enable me to become who I really am if I learn from that experience rather than moan and groan about it. Because when I moan and groan and bob up and down like a wussy water lily, I will not see the blessing that is embedded in every trial and every tribulation that comes our way. Someone once said to me in a very angry manner at an open forum that I was delivering, Roger, and they were very angry, it was a lady, you said that there's good in every circumstance. What about your father committing suicide and using a 12-gauge shotgun on himself? What about that? I later learnt that she'd lost a loved one in a similar way. And I remembered saying to her, she said, what good was in your father's death? And I said, I don't know. I can only tell you that there was good in it. I know that to be a true and natural eternal law. There was good in it. I don't know what it was. About a month later, a gentleman challenged me almost the same way. Had the same set of circumstances that caused him to be angry. I went to say, I don't know. And out of my mouth came this. There would be no language of crocodiles, not water lilies on the planet today. No system that enables people to recall in our toughest and darkest times principles of light and hope without ever having to go back to their notes again. That would not be in existence. Crocodiles would not be a vision on the earth today if my father hadn't gone through that tragic event in his life. And then I got it for the first time, what the good was. He left me the legacy of this ball. At 12 years of age, he began to teach me. He was one of the only masters on the planet at that time. There were about five that we knew of. All of them have passed away, including my father. And this is a legacy that he left me that I now am planning to take around the world for the youth of the world and for families, for family togetherness. It's a form of martial arts. It's a form of music. It's a language that speaks to us about the past, the present and the future. That demonstration will be given last, but we would like all of you to be part of our little croco ball team up here. And I just want you to follow a basic punch. You please listen to the rhythm. It's like life circumstances, whether we handle it well or not so well, we can always learn from it. Please listen to this rhythm and then we'd like you to just come up and do the same.
Now that's all we want you to do, so if you want to do any more than that... <laughs> could you come on up? Sure. You notice how many women are up here? See what I mean? Happens all the time. <laughs> Whoever said women were the weaker <laughs> sex? There. <laughs> all right, off we go. Well, that's a good effort. Thank you. Just for the sake of time, we only have a few seconds. Thank you. Would you like to come on up one at a time, please? Let's just move on in. Was no good effort. Well done. <laughs> Great effort. Whoa. Whoa! Out of every obstacle that has ever come my way, including the tragic death of my father by suicide, has come ultimate good that has helped me realise my ultimate potential as an educator. Little did I know that my career was to be an international speaker and to share these concepts that literally came from the most tragic events, the most tragic event in my life. There would be no system, a methodology, a language that encourages change, that will enable us to make wise choices in a jungle of abundant opportunities, to move us from far to rock. There would be no crocodiles, not water lilies, without that event having taken place in my life. I know that to be true. So when a car swerves in front of you for the next 21 days, I would ask you to practice. Remember this, the conscious mind can override the subconscious any day of the week. So any time a car swerves in front of you, instead of cursing, which is the general thing we've been hoodwinked to do, remember there are two events that govern life. The events we can control, the events we can't control. Towards the events that we can control, we should control them, if we're disciplined enough and not wusses. Towards the events that we can't control, we can always control our attitude towards those events. Nothing can stop us from doing that, unless we give it permission. So when a car swerves in front of you, practice moving from conscious level and retraining the subconscious mind. Practice saying out loud, no matter who's in the car, when a car swerves in front of you, especially when you're travelling, when you're in a rush to get somewhere, just say out loud, what a great swerve. <laughs> what a great swerve. Not just on the highways where we drive our cars, but the highways and byways of life. When something negative happens, I challenge you, say, what a great swerve. And watch what happens to your emotions when you do that. It places you in a position of composure that will enable you to become the master of your future. Pain, pain stayed so long, I said to him, I'll not have you anymore. I stamped my foot and said, be on your way. I was startled by the look he wore. He turned and looked at me and said, I, I who have been your teacher, I who have been your friend, all you know in regard to understanding love and empathy and patience I have taught you. Should I go? You know, I watched him leave and knew that he was wise. Wise because he left a heart grown tender in my breast. He left a far clearer vision in my eyes. I dried my tears and lifted up a song, even for one who had tortured me so long. Knowing who we really are, ladies and gentlemen, no walls, no barriers can ever prevent us from reaching into the future. And prevailing upon the un unlimited potential that we all hold, there's never been an Olympic Games where there hasn't been a record broken. Never. I believe there never will be. Mark Spitz broke, created history with seven gold medals. 
You know, today, if he was to race, he wouldn't even get a place. Where are we going to stop? It only stops in the realm of our minds. I'd like to then give you this demonstration, ask you to sit for a moment after you uh, have experienced it. I do it for no other reason but to honour my father, Abraham Anthony, and the legacy that he left his son that he didn't even know he was leaving and what that has done for my life and how the rhythm of this ball has helped me on my pathway of mastery.